Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella, and I look like a hot mess because I'm baking. <laughs> I'm all sweaty because during the day I turned the air off until close to time for Devin to get home because me and Jesse, we don't run hot like Devin does and he's working and all that jazz. Anyways, I'm baking a cake from scratch. I'm pretty excited. I make cakes from scratch all the time, but it's normally two cakes. It's carrot cake or German chocolate cake. Those are Devin's two favorite cakes. I started making them for him years ago and, you know, I just kind of revolve it. But I wanted cake. I rarely eat cake, but I was craving it um, yesterday. <laughs> I didn't want to go buy any. So I was like, well, I looked up some recipes and found a cake, a vanilla cake and a chocolate frosting that I had all the ingredients for. So they're cooking right now. I took a little tiny clip of that and I will put it towards the end of this. But anyways, this is an actual episode. Whew, I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> It'll cool down after the oven gets turned off. But um, it's just like a catch up because I don't have enough stuff to make an actual episode out of. But I just wanted to catch up with you guys because I've been MIA for like around a week. Jesse's playing. But I did want to hop on and say welcome to all the new subscribers. I've had a whole bunch of them since the Christmas and July fairies thing started. So welcome everybody. I hope you stick around after the giveaway. That's one thing I'm worried about. I'm worried that a lot of people are going to leave after the giveaway. So hopefully not. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you guys are going to be long term subscribers. I do have a finished object I want to share with you. And I got a whip, which I have to go get because I left it in the living room. And I got some Happy Mail I wanted to share so that the people who sent it knew that I got it, other than the ones that I already messaged and said that I got it. <laughs> and then I got a couple bags I was going to show you that's still in the shop. But um, I'm going to do a little life update towards the end of this video. It shouldn't be too long because it's just a um, quick check-in. I'll do an actual episode eventually. And uh, yeah. <laughs> but okay. So first, my finished object I'll just go ahead and show you is out of this book right here. Happy Guru Me that I was gifted. What? Okay, sorry. I had to fix his TV. But anyways, this book I was gifted um, recently. And I made the ladybug a couple weeks ago. And then I wanted to make the little bee. So here it is. Ta-da! <laughs> um, it's kind of odd shaped, I think. It doesn't... I, I don't know if I didn't stuff it the right way, but it's not as round. That's okay. I don't care. It's still super cute. To be forever to get the mouth the way I was okay with it, and I'm still not 100% okay with it. But it's super cute. It's all made out of scraps. It's uh, Red Heart. I think it's Super Saver, but it might be with Love. But it's a Daffodil. Um, black. This is uh, Petal Pink. And this is the Light Blue. And uh, just some safety eyes. I'll link them below. I get the, my safety eyes from Amazon. But I do want to branch out eventually and get some from Etsy shops where they're really pretty uh, painted. Anyways. Just got some fiber fill in him. He's cute. You start up here and work your way back. I sewed all of this stuff on before I closed it. Because <laughs> it's hard to sew pieces on after it's closed. So after I got to this black band, I went ahead and did all the, the eyes, the mouth, the cheeks, the antennas, and the um, wings. <laughs> and the cheeks in the pattern in the book are like felt. And I just made little crochet circles to make cheeks. But I think it turned out super cute. It's a cute little bee. <laughs> But yeah, I really like this book, and I'm actually going give to give away a copy of this in a video later this week, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, I got one gifted to me from another person, and I'll actually show you that in just a minute. It's in the mail pile, <laughs> and uh, so it'll be a giveaway in a couple days, probably around Thursday or Friday. But yeah, I love this book. Super cute book. The only whip that I'm currently working on is the baby blanket I've been working on for a while. I got a lot of it done. It's actually almost done. I only got... Uh, three more rounds, I think, of the border to be finished. So here's the blanket. It's sideways. The middle part is made with lime brown ice cream lemon swirl. There's two balls in it. Actually, one in some. This is what was left of the second ball. And let's see here. Right here is where there was a knot in the first ball. And then uh, right here is where the first ball ended. So this is just the amount of second ball plus a round all the way around of the border. So about a ball and a half, I guess. So I'll have to find something to do with that. I might make a little bonnet or some little booties to go with this. And then the white border is Lion Brand Baby Soft. I think it's just white. <laughs> white. I got that recently. So I'm just, uh, I got it still attached. And look, the stitch marker I'm using is a B. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, so I gotta do a couple more rows of this V stitch border. And then the last row, I think, is just double crochet all the way around. So it's gonna be really cute, I think. But I like it a lot. I think it's a really cute blanket. I do wish it was wider. So if I make another one, I might make it wider. But this would still be a really cute gift to someone. I tried, I picked these colors because I thought it'd be gender neutral for, uh, you know, if someone's having a boy or a girl. 
And I th like I said, I'm going to try to use up this yarn to make it like a bonnet or some booties or something to go along with it. And then it'll be a little gift set. But I'm almost done with that. I'm probably going to finish that later today when I'm just chilling and watching TV and crocheting. Hopefully that's the goal. I want to finish it. I tried to finish it yesterday, but I got distracted. <laughs> but yeah, I love that blanket pattern. I'm definitely going to make that again. And I can't remember the pattern right off the top of my head, but I'll link it in the description box below. It's Adeline baby blanket but I can't remember who made it anyways I'll link it below it'll be down there so yeah that's what I'm working on this week crochet wise I do want to design a couple patterns because I have a couple little crochet alongs I was wanting to do one in July and one in what's the month before October September <laughs> one in September okay so before I show you happy I'm just going to show you quickly the bags that are still in the shop um there's only a handful so there's a thread around this is one it's just a red it's really bright red with yellow stars it's got a white inside with like floral print the tags are inside because it's where i accidentally ordered the wrong tags but they still work they're still cute so that's in the shop and then there's this motorcycle one it has a tag on the outside and it's got like a blue denim -y looking liner and then the last project bag that's in the shop is a rain boots one which has an outside tag and it's got yellow inside like a marbly yellow and then there's also two rain boot notion pouches I think they're the white yeah they're both got the white florally print in there <laughs> I like having those white floral prints it's like white on white for backgrounds for random prints that I have a hard time finding matching uh, liners but yeah super cute that's what's left in the shop if you're interested go check it out now for happy mom I got I think three packages this week this ah, paper clip get it situated this first one is from June she sent a little package for me and for Jesse, she sent Jesse some uh, stickers, which I have right here. I haven't let him use them yet because uh, he has a ton of stickers. And in that bag, also with the stickers, she sent him a couple of dollars, which was awesome. Good timing because <laughs> he was super excited about it. So we put it in his little in cash envelope and we let him pick out little toys when we're out and about doing stuff. So he was happy about that. And then she also sent me this uh, card. It's a birthday card with a note in it, which I won't show the note. But she made this card herself, and on the back, she's got a little stamp with her name on it, which is cool. Uh, yeah, okay, that over there. And there's the other little note. But she also sent some fabric, a bunch of fabric. This is a small piece. I think this might be a fat quarter. It's got bicycles. <laughs> and this is a big piece of yellow. These would be great liners, or just if I want to make outers that are just normally a theme, you know, cartoon characters and stuff. But... When I first opened this, I was like, are these tomatoes? And I was like, no, you idiot. They're cherries. <laughs> I don't know. I thought they were tomatoes. And then there's this piece of green and pink polka dots. And there's this little piece. This is really cute. It's like sock monkeys with numbers. So it's like a kid one. And there's this big piece of green. <laughs> green, I don't know what to call it. This one, me and Devin think, look like red blood cells. But... I don't know if they are red blood cells, but that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> it says floral vented, vin, vinette, floral vinette. And then there's this piece of brown floral. And this one's really pretty. And it's this big piece, this is a big piece. And then there's this little piece, it's got alphabets. And then there's this really cute piece with cats with yarn balls. So she sent me all that fabric. So these will be appearing in upcoming bags and liners for bags in the future. Thank you so much, June, for that. I do appreciate it. Anytime anyone sends me fabric, it makes me super happy because it, it helps me make money for my family without having to spend a bunch of money in the first place to buy fabric. The next package is from Sandy, and she's the Whispering Stitcher. And I'm going to put, I'm going to show, she puts stickers all over. The front's got stickers too, but it's got her address. And I don't know if she wants the world to know that. But she sent me this book, which is actually pretty cool. It's about, um... It's called the Practical Spinner's Guide to Silk. So it's tips and stuff about spinning silk uh, fiber into yarn, which is pretty cool. I've always wanted to try a drop spindle. Um, I don't know if I'll try it with silk at first because I feel like that's probably expensive. I'll probably start with whatever the cheapest fiber is and work my way up. But yeah, I want to get a drop spindle one of these days and um, learn how to spin. So that'd be cool. I'd love to get like a actual spinning machine thingy in the future spinning wheel spinning whatever they're called the last package came from tina she's the one who it's got a sticker on it 
donated another copy of this book she was able to find at her Dollar Tree. She found two, so she kept one and sent one to me to donate for a giveaway, Ugh. which I'm going to do later this week. So it's just another copy of that book. She also sent some extras for Jesse. I know she sent this thing, but it's empty. <laughs> it's like a little coloring thing. She sent him some stickers, which are already all over the house. And then she also sent me a little journal with some stickers on it. So I'm excited about that because I love journals and stickers. <laughs> but yeah, so that's all the Happy Moon I got this week. I gotta put it all away now. And yeah, so f as far as life update, the reason I've been in MIA is because, uh, you know, I talked about my mom getting going back for her mammogram and they did find a tumor. So now they're in the process of figuring out if it's growing or if it's cancerous or benign or they're gonna be doing a biopsy hopefully this week. Um, and they're going to be, you know, figuring out what to do about that. <laughs> Which I'm hoping it's not another surgery, but it's probably going to be another surgery. She just had a surgery a couple weeks ago on her shoulder. Uh, it's just annoying. <laughs> and it's real stressful, so I'm stressed out. And I'm trying to stay busy. That's why I'm baking a cake. I'm trying to keep my mind busy and my hands busy so that I'm not thinking about so much stuff. Plus, I have a personal matter going on that I don't want to talk about because it's personal. But uh, it's, you know, bothering me. It's stressing me out. And, um... Uh, and then on top of that, my sister's father-in-law, who I knew longer than she did, <laughs> because I knew him before she ever met his son, he passed away um, yesterday. No, two days ago? I can't remember. Sunday. Um, he had other issues, health issues. He actually went to the hospital with double pneumonia, but he ended up testing positive for COVID-19, so his health declined super quickly. They ended up putting him on a ventilator, and then he was on the ventilator for like a week, I think, a week and a half. And then they had to take him off of it. And he lived for, I think, four days. And then he passed away after that. And uh, they have a GoFundMe set up, which I will link below if you're interested in checking it out. Um, it'd be great. <laughs> you know, he, he had life insurance, but only he had just had it for a little while. So it's not going to cover the whole funeral. It's just going to cover $2,000 of it. And he's having an actual funeral, so it's more than $2,000. He was a really nice guy. He was a volunteer firefighter forever. He was a really outstanding member of his church. He always volunteered and stuff. He's a really great guy. Um, I knew him, like I said, I knew him. He used to, actually, when I first started going to church there, he, he, him and his wife would come and pick me up and take me to church every day and take me home every night, you know. They would drive me back and forth um, to church. And, you know, I became friends with that family through going to church with them and then I introduced his son to my sister and then now they're married and have a son. They've been married I think seven years. This will be the eighth year this December, I think. No, nine. They got married in 2011, however many years. It's nine years? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I can't, I can't math. <laughs> but uh, it's really sad that he passed and he left behind his wife and four kids and four grandkids that I know of and five or six great grandkids <laughs> and a church family and you know friends at the fire department all that no one could visit him really uh the only one who was allowed to go in there with him after they unhooked him from the ventilator was his daughter because his wife couldn't handle doing it alone she stayed with him for a few days before he passed but no one else was allowed to go in there because of the whole covid stuff so no one was allowed to see him before he passed and that's devastating i couldn't imagine like, if that was my mom, I couldn't imagine not being able to be with her when she passed away. So, I'm sure they're suffering big time from that. And they need help financially. So, if you are able to give <laughs> and um, you don't mind helping a complete stranger, <laughs> uh, definitely check out the GoFundMe. Even if it's just a couple bucks. Because, you know, I have thousands of viewers. If just a few of y'all gave a little bit of money, it would help a lot. Um, towards their goal of just getting his funeral paid for. So, that's not something else I have to worry about. And um, his daughter had COVID and his wife had COVID. And as far as I know, um, they've not been super sick with it. The daughter got kind of sick, but never hospital sick and neither did the, the wife. So it's just really sad. The only reason he deteriorated so quickly is because his health was already low. He had, like I said, he had double pneumonia. And then he had also previously, recently, had a couple of strokes and his health was already just, you know, in a bad place. So the COVID just... I don't think COVID killed him. I just think he it helped it along. And um, like I told Devin, he didn't die of COVID. He died with COVID. Um, he was probably already heading towards death anyways because his health was just already going down. And then the COVID just kind of pushed it along there. 
But yeah, so we've been dealing with all that stuff and it's super stressful. I'm mostly stressed out by my mom. I'm worried about her. <laughs> I'm super close to my mom. If you've been watching me for any amount of time, you know that. I'm always with my mom hanging out and stuff. And so I can't really be around her a lot because she's, her health is fragile and the COVID stuff. And it's just a really stressful time. <laughs> and I'm trying to um, keep myself busy. That's why I haven't been on here a lot, but I'm going to try to boost up. I'm filming this now. I'm going to film my Watch You Working on Wednesday video. And then I'm going to do the giveaway video. <laughs> so there will be videos of me popping up. And I might try to film for the other channel too. I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and hop off here because the cake's almost done. And i got to get it out of the oven. And then I will see you guys whenever I see you again. Bye, guys. I don't think you can see it that good. But that is a made-from-scratch vanilla cake. And right here is some made-from-scratch chocolate uh, frosting. <laughs> I almost said pudding. I had to wash one of my stove eyes because it's damn cooked and got grease all over it. But, um, yeah, look at it. It tastes so good. It kind of tastes rich, kind of like almost dark chocolatey, but it's got enough powder and sugar in it that it's sweeter dark chocolate. <laughs> so it's actually really good, so I'm excited. So I was just sitting there waiting for the cake to get done and to cool, and it's, it's gotten thicker as it's set. Ooh, it looks like, it looks like frosting. Yum.